In June 20, 1995, the infamous Belkan War came to a close after a peace treaty was signed between Belka and the Allied forces in the city of Lumen. Having been defeated, Belka begrudgingly accepted the Allied forces' terms of surrender. They were forced to relinquish control of their southern territory and the South Belka Munitions Factory to the Ocean Federation. However, these territorial and industrial losses wouldn't be the only losses that Belka would suffer. Their legendary air force was completely ravaged, having lost large numbers of pilots and aircraft alike. These factors, combined with Belka's low population, had led them to brand any surviving active pilot they had in their roster to be reclassified as a precious resource. To make up for the massive loss of manpower and utilities, a general within the Belkin military had proposed to reconstruct the air force. Unfortunately, this plan never came to fruition due to the cuts in government spending. With their pride as the pioneers of aerial combat on the line, Belka needed to find a way to rebuild their military might while minimizing troop losses as much as possible. Their solution to this problem came in the form of unmanned technology. Activating Zona Endless. System online. I think this calls for a little history lesson. Zone of Endless, or ZOE, as I will be referring to it throughout the lecture, is an artificial intelligence system developed by the former South Belkin Munitions Factory, Grunder Industries. ZOE falls under the classification of a UAV since it is able to operate an aircraft without a human pilot. Despite having the same classification as the MQ-99 and 101 drones, ZOE had one defining feature that made it stand out. Its ability to learn from consecutive battles. During dogfights, Zoe would actively study its opponent's maneuvers and tactics. Zoe would flee from the battle if the opponent proved to be more than a match for the AI or if its plane received too much damage. Once it returned to base, Zoe would analyze and integrate the newly acquired data into its flight data. Later in future battles, Zoe would use those maneuvers and tactics it learned to overcome and defeat its opponents. Sometime after the Belkin War in 1995, Grunder selected a few engineers to work on the advanced AI system in complete secrecy from the Ocean Federation. The project was kept secret from the Oceans since Grunder was permitted to develop military tech solely for the Ocean military. It is even speculated that a retired Belkin ace working under the company's UAV department, Theodore Sander, assisted with the project. However, any information confirming this theory is unavailable. By 1998, Grunder successfully created and installed the ZOE program into five separate aircraft. The unit captain piloting the F-14D Super Tomcat, the unit major piloting the F-A-18E Super Hornet, the unit colonel piloting the YF-23 Black Widow II, the unit general piloting the F-15 SMTD, and the 5th unit, under the codename Commander, piloted Grunder's advanced superfighter, the ADF-01 Falcon. All five of the Zoe aircraft were given a distinctive crimson paint job without any nationality markings. This was to ensure that no one could trace Zoe's origins back to Grunder. With five units ready to take flight, Grunder needed to test how well the AI could perform on the battlefield. Luckily for them, a large-scale coup d'etat was happening in Yuzia, giving the AI system plenty of opportunities to test its features. Zoe arrived on the Yuzian continent on May 1998. It is unclear how Grunder transported these five fighters to the continent. Regardless, Grunder was successful in delivering Zoe to Yuzia's doorstep without the rebel army and the Yuzian allied forces becoming aware of the unit's existence. Zoe made its debut when the first unit, the Zoe Captain, was deployed over Meriton on May 10th, 1998. Scarface Squadron had just finished destroying the fleeing rebel forces from the previous operation when an unidentified target appeared on Phoenix's radar. Phoenix engaged the mysterious Crimson F-14D over the highlands. After an extended aerial bout with the mercenary, the Zoe unit disengaged and nursed its damaged Tomcat back to safety. The second unit, operating the F-A-18E, 
The Zoe Major arrived in the middle of a dogfight between Phoenix and Cocoon Squadron over the Scully Islands on July 7, 1998. Zoe's unexpected appearance gave Cocoon Squadron time to regroup and observe the battle between Phoenix and the rogue fighter. Phoenix successfully damaged the Super Hornet and forced it to flee from the airspace. With the uninvited guest out of the way, Phoenix turned his attention back to Cocoon Squadron and continued the fight uninterrupted. On July 21st, 1998, the Zoe Colonel traveled to the Schofield region where Scarface Squadron was escorting Pennant Squadron back to base after surviving an ambush from rebel forces. Colonel shot down one of the planes from Pennant Squadron. Phoenix quickly engaged the aggressor, focusing on not letting it take down another plane. However, this encounter would prove to be different than the last two as he was facing off against a unit with improved flight capabilities. With no intentions of retreating, the Zoe Colonel engaged the mercenary, performing advanced aerial maneuvers than the previous two units. However, Phoenix managed to deliver a fatal blow to Colonel's aircraft, causing the plane to careen into the water. This engagement marks the first time a Zoe unit was shot down and destroyed by a pilot. On September 7th, 1998, Scarface Squadron and the Yuzian Allied Forces launched a large-scale invasion against the Rebel Forces GHQ in St. Ark. After the second line of defense was neutralized, the Zoe Unit General arrived and provided air support for the defending Rebel Forces. Phoenix quickly engaged the unit. Suddenly, his radar and HUD start acting up. More targeting boxes were appearing around the actual target. This Zoe unit came equipped with an advanced jamming system that affected radar and HUD by creating false targeting boxes. Despite the electronic countermeasure, Phoenix managed to take down his opponent and proceeded with his mission to recapture St. Ark. On September 18, 1998, the remaining rebel forces stationed in the repurposed National Missile Defense System Fortress Intolerance were preparing to launch a nuclear missile against Yuktobanya. They were hoping to start a world war between Osea, Yuktobanya, and the Yuzian Allied Forces. Phoenix was ordered to directly assault the fortress by flying inside the facility's open air vent and destroying the ICBM from the inside. While approaching Fortress Intolerance in his XFA-27, Phoenix's radar lights up with a single enemy target. It is the fifth and final Zoe unit commander, piloting the highly advanced ADF-01 Falcon. The AI and mercenary engaged in one last dogfight. Zoe attacked Phoenix with everything it had, backwards firing missiles, creating false targeting boxes on his HUD, and executing advanced aerial maneuvers. However, Phoenix proved to be the better pilot, and he destroyed the Falcon. With the obstacle out of the way, Phoenix proceeded to destroy the ICBM inside Fortress Intolerance and put an end to the coup d'etat. As the coup d'etat came to a close, Zoe seemed to have vanished without a trace. It never made an appearance over the skies of Yuzia during the Continental War between ISAF and Arusia or the various Free Arusia uprisings. For the longest time, we assumed that the project was scrapped since three of the five units containing valuable flight data were destroyed and possibly costing Grunder more money to replace the lost units. However, we now know that Grunder did not scrap the project, and they continue to work on the AI for the next 20 years. If you like this video of Strange Real History, please intercept and destroy the like and subscribe button if you wish to see more Strange Real History videos. As always, my name is Saluda Seversoul, and I'll see you next time. Soul out.